itself. This week, we've been sharing with you what highway safety officials call a dangerous epidemic, text messaging while driving. We've told you the frightening statistics, and we've shown you lives changed by distracted drivers. Well, tonight, Fox 17's Flynn Adam joins young drivers on the road to see how well they perform while texting. Flint, I, I, I can imagine it's not good. And you can imagine the level of distraction that occurs while texting and driving, but actually seeing it is something else altogether. We watch young drivers text while driving in our special report, Deadly Distractions. How hard is it to text and drive? And how does it affect your concentration? To find out, we asked the Tennessee Highway Patrol to set up a winding test course. Our drivers, 18-year-old Brandon Dyer and his friend, 19-year-old Brandon Clements. Dyer runs the course first and keeps a steady texting conversation with his buddy. But it's a challenging drive. It was a little tricky. I mean, the curves, everything, and then the sharp left, and it's, it wasn't the easiest course, especially while texting. In the end, Dyer passes without bumping a cone. But he's clearly distracted. Notice his eyes constantly looking down, and he rarely goes above 25 miles an hour. Brandon Clemens had reservations before he even started. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing it in the first place. I shouldn't text while I'm driving. It's not the right thing to do. Clemens chucks through the course, though noticeably less agile than his friend. The ride is jerky and slow, but he also passes without hitting a cone. That isn't necessarily good news. Yeah, he's looking down quite a bit, looking away from the road. Captain Chip Miller reviewed video from inside the car. Even he was surprised by how often the driver's eyes weren't on the road. One of the things that comes to mind on this, he's, he's looking, looking down so much, and of course this is controlled atmosphere out here. He's not driving that fast, running at 70 miles an hour or something. And if something were to happen in front of him real quick, he's not going to be able to react in time. A valid point, one we wanted to explore. We asked the Brentwood Driver Training School to help us create a real texting while driving experience. These training vehicles have controls in both seats up front, Instructor Jeremy Lyon can take over the car at any moment. We gathered several students between 16 and 18 years old. They shared two things in common, a willingness to text while driving. I text almost every time I drive. And confidence behind the wheel. I'm a good driver. I'm actually a really good driver. I, uh, I don't really have any problems with it. Haven't been in a wreck yet, knock on wood. Just, just that good, kind of. Now ready for the test, we step outside and get the car rolling. 16-year-old Dan Buecher is first. Driving through Brentwood during rush hour is never easy, but Dan is also texting and driving in a storm. Dan had a tough time. I'll go one way, look up, correct that, and I'll go the other way. He swerved quite a bit. Six times he crossed over lines, drifted under the shoulder of the road and aimed toward oncoming traffic. At one point, he almost missed an exit ramp. Dan was happy when his test drive ended. It's hard to read what you're t typing and drive and keep your speed up all at the same time. 17-year-old Liz Bowman had an even harder time. I'm kind of scared. Oh my God. We counted 17 times where she was dangerously distracted. She drifted across lanes, almost missed an exit. I feel bad for the people behind me. Ran a red light and was heading toward a near head-on collision. Instructor Jeremy Lyon even had to hit the brakes several times. I mean, it does definitely take my focus off the road. After being with them and doing this today, um, it makes me wonder, as I'm driving down the road, who might be texting and crossing the line coming at me. Distraction isn't even the worst thing we saw. 18-year-old Thomas Dyer demonstrated how he uses his knees to drive and text. It's hard to text with one hand, so if focusing on texting, you have to use the knees. His focus, obviously, wasn't on the road. I don't even hardly remember my drive since I was texting the whole time. Our final drive is with 17-year-old Kelsey Sawyer. My mom says hi. It's getting dark. Yeah. The rain is heavy. There are a few bumps. 
It's we're good. We didn't die. Fish tail there. We didn't die. And some harrowing moments. Whoa. I almost ran us off the interstate. <laughs> when our day ended, we sat down with instructor Jeremy Lyon and Holly Bowman, Liz's mother. This might be the most dangerous thing other than drinking and driving. This would be the most dangerous thing because you're using your eyes and not, and not your and you're not you're not talking on the phone. You're looking at the phone. I'm very terrified now to put my daughter alone in her own car knowing the text messaging problem. Driving instructor Jeremy Lyon says the time he spent driving with these kids gave him plenty to think about. He says he plans on making driver distraction a big part of future driving courses at his school. Scott. Interesting stuff. Thanks, Flint. And our special report has already caught the attention of at least one state lawmaker. Representative Beth Harwell of Nashville tried to make texting and driving in Tennessee illegal last session. Her bill never got out of committee, though, but Harwell believes the time has come for the passage of this bill. I was so glad to see you doing it because it really is an educational process for people to realize how dangerous this is to do. State Representative Beth Harwell was moved by our special report, especially the mid-state mother whose son was killed in a fiery crash she is convinced was caused by texting and driving. The cell phone up against your phone, your ear is one thing because you can still see the road, but a text message, you're taking your eye off the road and you cannot drive and do that. Harwell says the powerful cell phone lobby kept her bill from getting out of committee last session, but she believes good sense will eventually carry the day. Representative Harwell likens this effort to the mandatory seatbelt law. Initially, there was great resistance, but now buckling up is as natural as tying your shoes. Series such as this open up the public's eyes to demand the legislature take action to make us all a little safer. Harwell says she will reintroduce her bill in the next session of the legislature and will again call for a minimum fine. And she believes because of our report, the political climate may well be different this time. When the public demands a change in what we allow when people are driving a car, you'll see that change take place. And I think we'll all be better off. Our roads will certainly be safer. Representative Harwell tells me she's hoping that Fox 17 News viewers call their own state lawmakers, tell them to get behind this bill. We're going to keep an eye on this legislation once it is filed, and we will keep you posted on its progress.